Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 12, Part 5. Welcome to Part 5. In this part, we are going to learn how to create a simple example that goes with the self-organizing map that we created over the last few class parts. This simple example will just show how a series of input items are classified into the groups that are provided to the self-organizing map. This will be done with a graphical GUI application that visually shows what's going on. We will then, in the next class session, create a more complex application that makes use of the self-organizing map. This application will read handwriting samples and attempt to tell you what letter was just drawn. We will begin by looking at the example program. The program is going to start up and train very quickly. There you see, after 20 retries, it has found what it considers the best solution for this neural network. These are random values, so this is not necessarily something that the neural network can train on that well. The white dots are the output neurons, and you can see that the weights on the output neurons, given by their locations, it's moved them in such a way so that they're kind of evenly distributed throughout the, the grid that represents the possible input values. The green lines from the white dots show the winning neuron for each of the given possibilities of inputs. This shows that the white dots, which are the outputs, the groups, have been somewhat evenly distributed throughout the possible input values, which is the grid coming into the network. Now let's look at how the training set is created for this program. We create an input array for the training that holds a number of samples. This is 100 samples and there are going to be two input neurons. We're going to now loop across all of the samples and all of the input neurons in each of those because it's a two-dimensional array and we are going to set each of these values to a random number. So we're essentially providing it with 100 random numbers that it can attempt to classify into groups. Of course, this is not going to be terribly effective at producing groups for these because these are inherently random numbers and there's no real patterns to find, but it does show how the weights will be distributed and how the self-organizing map is going to construct itself in order to attempt to classify these numbers that it's being provided with to train. Next, we set up to actually train the neural network. We are passing in the input count, the output count, and we are going to use multiplicative normalization for this neural network. We create a training object and we are going to use the subtractive method and we are going to also use a learning rate of 50% or 0.5. We then initialize the training and we set up the error to the maximum value because we're going to keep track of the error we want to consistently lower this to lower and lower values so we set it to the maximum value that it could be set to so that the first value is going to be lower than that. We keep count of the errors and we proceed on to the main training loop. The main training loop will be shown in the next slide. We are going to loop until we have an error count of 10. What an error count of 10 really means is that we have had 10 iterations where the training has not sufficiently improved the neural network. Each time through, we are going to perform an iteration. We're going to increase the retry count so that we know the total number of tries that we've made. And we're going to obtain the total error and the best error from the, from the training object. Each time through this, we're going to call the paint method, which is going to redraw the GUI and redraw the weight matrix that is being gra that was graphically shown earlier in this part when you saw the example program being ran. This process will continue until the error count is greater th is not less than 10 anymore. We're going to now see how we decide if we should increment that error count or not as we continue training. If the best error is less than the last error, then we are going to set the last error equal to the best error and we're going to reset the error count because we have improved the error rate of the neural network. 
Otherwise, we are going to execute the else clause of the if statement, which is going to cause the error count to increase by one. Increasing the error count by one indicates that we have had a training cycle where we have not substantially improved the error rate for the neural network. This continues to count up. Once this reaches 10, it will cause the outer while loop that we saw in a previous slide to no longer execute and the training will stop. The neural, this simple example figures that if we have not improved the error rate any in the last 10 iterations, we're probably done training and we're not going to be able to improve it any further. And we're working with random numbers anyway, so it can't be improved. This concludes class 12. In this class, you saw how to implement a self-organizing map. You also saw a simple example of the self-organizing map. In the next class session, class 13, you will see a more complex implementation of the same self-organizing map that we created here. The example program for the next class session will recognize simple handwriting letters and attempt to tell you what letter you actually drew. We hope you will continue with class session 13. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java, and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C-Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.